1 Kings 12, 25 through 27. Then Jeroboam built Shemek in the hill country of Ephraim. Let's see what Shemek is. Uh, so, while I'm looking up these terms, it's important for the king to have had built his own capital. So prior to this time, it was in Jerusalem, and this sets him apart. Um, so, so main Israelite city of the massive tribe, first capital of Israel. So it's the first capital. It's simply the capital. Um, and lived in it. And went out from there and built Paninio. Which I'll look up as well. Daniel is um okay. Yes, this is a religious aspect of this place because this is where Jacob wrestled with the angel or God or whatever interpretation is that is, but. It's where that happened. So it's kind of him setting up um, capital and then making ground for a religious center, which we see um, instance with Jesus discussing the woman of well. She talks about the well itself rather than the temple, their place of worship. And this would also be the new capital. So he has two capitals at this point. Moving the capital twice <clears throat> was kind of chaotic. We see this in Judah later, where it's moved from Jerusalem, or moved to Jerusalem. But he's kind of trying to settle his kingdom, is what's happening. Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will return to David's house. The sons of David, Jeroboam, Rehoboam. Not necessarily Rehoboam, but maybe David's sons later. And it's very likely God could have allowed it go back to a king such as Josiah, who decided he found God's word and wanted to live by it. Um, other righteous kings. I don't see God giving it back to Rehoboam or that even being a genuine threat. It's likely this could have been after some passing of time that he's building it because he's building this capital. He built it and then moved it. So it's good to assume it's a period of time that this happens. Um, if this people goes up to offer sacrifices to the Lord in the Lord's house at Jerusalem, which is what they should have been doing, and something he should have not stopped or tried to discourage him from doing. This is where he's fallen into very bad way, because God allowed them to become a kingdom. Now they're going to turn against God. Now, oftentimes that's the exact same way, way we act. God allows us to do something, and when we think we got there on our own, we turn and do things further on our own. At Jerusalem, the heart of the people will turn again to their Lord, even to Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they will kill me and return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Now, the fact is, they didn't want to go to the house of the Lord because of Rehoboam. They didn't care about Rehoboam. They cared about the Lord. They had their king. Rehoboam denied their need. They had a God who loved their, them and loved their need. Jeroboam should have never stood in between that. This was what God warned the people through Samuel when first king, when kings were first established with Saul that things like this would happen. We today, we have officials, we have president, we have governors and senators and all this. We're never 
allow them to come between us and God.